This is an Ilco 045 Performance Series Key Duplicator. It is a manual key duplicator, which means that you apply the forces at X and Y in order to copy the, your template key. This is your tracer jaw. This is the tracer. This is the calibration knob. And this is the shoulder gauge and the tip gauge. Mine is currently out of calibration on this portion, so I will need to correct it. But it should flip down and it should flip up with ease and your key carriage this whole assembly should ride back and forth with ease this is your cutter your cutting wheel and it should be sharp this is your deburring wheel and it should be you know rather it should have a lot of material on it it doesn't take a lot of force to knock a burr off of a off of a key blank unless it's steel down here is the on and off switch the feet notice my machine is currently on an uneven platform the feet are adjustable so that you can raise or lower them to keep your machine from rocking which is what I did. Mine has an oiler spout to keep the bearings inside nice and lubricated. My shroud is intact. I believe right here is the breaker. Yes, the circuit breaker. With manual you are able you are able to correct depth of cut just by not sinking the tracer all the way in or you can also make it really you know a, a little too deep if you want by really forcing uh, the key carriage into the tracer as you copy and that will produce a deeper cut the machine should run smoothly no knocking particular machines are the four-way jaws. Four-way jaws allow you to grip really warty keys with aggressive milling that are hard to index in just flat key uh, vices. The standard side Here on X, there is a nice V on both the top and bottom. On the wide, it's flat but deeper than the standard, standard, wide. And the narrow is just very narrow but straight on both edges and that is to grip like your very small padlock keys or furniture keys or uh, file cabinet keys but having options is always good and you can always shim the flat ones like the wide one you can shim it to hold like a B106, B111 I'll go ahead and take this apart so you can see top there's a notch in the corner 
and in the base. That's how you index it. Pretty easy. There's a nice spring. And that's it. This is the bottom. And this obviously fits into the key carriage down here. I'm just gonna fit it with the corner top right. Spring. Match it up. And it goes regular washer. And then your thrush washer. And then regular. Make a little sandwich. Okay. Onto the threaded rod. And your your nut. And I always clamp it down all the way just to make sure it's fully indexed. <clears throat> and uh, I always, whenever I get new machines, look at the faces of the jaws to see if the cutter has stricken it because of uh, misuse or miscalibration. And this one is in primo shape. Even the handle that is often broken is still intact. So. I suppose I'll go ahead and remove the shroud. And there's a screw on the very front right here. is in pretty good shape. As you can see, it doesn't appear to have been used very much. Nice big motor. Very simple looking, huh? Got some, looks like brass or bronze bearings right there. Back and forth, both sides. That's about it. Pretty cut and dry. Let's run it. So I'm gonna load. Or jaw, and I'm going to do this by opening it up a little bit to where uh, the key blank will fit inside. There it is, it fits all the way down. And I'm going to lock it in place. I'm going to move. Shoulder gauge down. 
and line it up to where the shoulder gauge bumps against the trace key shoulder. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the cut side. I'm gonna get it to feed in. And as you can see, I've locked it in place and the shoulder is off on my machine. Who knows why? But because of this, um, I'm gauging from the bottom side of the jaw anyways. Might as well. So just bump the key to where it stops on the bottom side of the jaw. And tighten it nicely. Make sure that we bottom it out on this side. residential and commercial keys but usually shoulder gauging is the best way once you have your trace side and cut side set up you need to move it to where you have it set to where the tracer is resting right by the shoulder. Okay, that way you don't accidentally cut into the shoulder. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on, and what I do is I like to kind of pinch the tracer with one finger and the jaw with another, and whenever I bring it up. I like to just kind of push and squeeze. And that's how I trace over the trace key. And you see how the cut or the tracer is angled, so is the cutter. That's the cut side. So you wanna you want to cut in this direction. And then you have a nice more expedient incline. You can use that to clean up the key once you produce your good initial pass. Okay, I'm just going to line it up again real quick, turn the machine on, and do my little pinch and squeeze. Okay, and so I've produced as it is right now, it's a little, a little choppy, so I'll show you. So we'll hold this and do this at the same time. cutter all right and you see it's Burr City right now quite ugly so now what we need to do is use this deburring wheel to clean it up so we're gonna turn the machine back on spinning this way so we're gonna feed facing down. Don't be scared of it, they call it the softy. It will heat your finger up, but you know, don't jam it in there, but you know, it's not really gonna hurt you. It's just uh, abrasive enough to knock the burrs off. Keepers right off. 
So, turn this spinning cutting wheel of death off while it's not in use. There you have it. That is a Ilco 045 Performance Series key duplicator, manual key duplicator. And basically the process of how you use it. Um, if you have one for sale and the price is good enough, feel free to contact me and let me know. And if you need consultation on some locksmith equipment that you perhaps inherited or acquired and you, you know nothing about, feel free to give me a, a shout as well. Um, my name is Jareth Garza. Thanks again for watching.